Let's bring in our featured guest of the morning. He's Andrew Pyle, Senior Investment Advisor and Portfolio Manager at CIBC Wood Gundy. Andrew, great to have you along. Thanks for making time for us this morning. Uh, what's, your take on, what's your take on the, what Jerome Powell had to say yesterday? I think it was exactly in line with expectations and the market reaction. We actually saw uh, the S&P 500 rise when the Fed first made its announcement and then plunge, uh, I, I believe, after uh, Jerome Powell made his, his um, his uh, comments at the at the press event. By the time the day was over, there wasn't a whole lot of change in the S and P 500. Yeah, you're right, Paul. This is exactly what the market wanted to hear. We've known for a while that the Fed was going to have to move into the camp that the market has been in basically for the last several weeks, and that is that rate cuts uh, in you know the near term uh, were off the table. The inflation numbers, growth numbers, all argued against any type of easing in the next couple of months. And the market wanted to hear the Fed basically acknowledge that without becoming too hawkish. And as you mentioned, Paul, the outside risk here was that uh, Powell would appear too hawkish and maybe start alluding to the fact that the job is not done and that they may have to become even more restrictive. That wasn't the case, and that's why you've seen the markets uh, push higher this morning. And there we see that uh, intraday look at the S&P 500 with uh, the index rising uh, in the minutes after the Fed announcement and then declining as uh, Jerome Powell uh, spoke. Does this change, uh, uh, Andrew, the, uh, will this change uh, fundamental sentiment in the market? We've seen markets under pressure during April uh, as, uh, as investors have become worried about a, a lengthy period of time without a rate cut from the U.S. Fed. Well, I'm pretty amazed at how well the market has actually adjusted to this new reality, Paul, because, I mean, consider this. You know, back in December, early January, we were talking about six rate cuts in 2024. We've now transitioned from that view to a view now where, you know, most economists and most traders expect that we may see one cut uh, towards the end of the year. That's a pretty impressive transition. And yet this market is held in. I would argue right now that the, the risk reward ratio has shifted. Um, if we're now preparing for no easing until perhaps November, December, um, it does now push the risk towards, you know, what would happen if we actually got some cooler inflation data between now and let's say July, or even if the jobs data Data begins to weaken. Um, you could see the Fed, and I know this is going to you know blow a few people away, but the Fed may go back to guidance suggesting that we may get a couple or maybe even three rate cuts. So I think the market's well positioned right now. There are broad expectations, of course, that the Bank of Canada will reduce its rate before the U.S. Fed does. What what should should, should Canadian investors understand about that scenario? Well, I think investors really have to acknowledge, Paul, that the Canadian economy right now is not in the same shape as the U.S., uh, even though we're not talking about you know, dramatically weaker conditions in Canada. Uh, we're simply not in the same game right now. We've got more challenges with respect to the impact of higher interest rates uh, on household spending uh, than we have in the States. And I think that reality is borne out in the data. Uh, and I think it supports the Bank of Canada in adjusting rates lower uh, as we move into the summer. So we still think we're probably going to see rate, uh, three rate cuts by the Bank of Canada against maybe one to two for the Fed. Um, and I don't see anything right now that's going to push the bank away from that, uh, unless, of course, we were to see a dramatic fall in the Canadian dollar beyond what we've already seen. Uh, or again, if we were to see uh, a couple of sporadic uh, inflation numbers that come in, you know, much higher than what the bank would like to see, that could take that rate cut off the table. But right now, I think by the time we get to midsummer, we will be looking at lower rates in Canada. That's Andrew 